Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Welcome to stage eight of your guitar beginners course. I'm sure you're going to be enjoying this one because what we're going to be checking out is a few variations of a G chord. There's actually, I've shown you one kind of standard way of playing G chord, but there's quite a few that are really, really useful in specific circumstances. And you'll find as you play more and learn more songs that you kind of think, oh, gee, I wish there was an easier way of doing this. Well, this is now's the time we're going to learn the easier ways of doing the G chord. So let's go to a close up now and I'll show you these other little ways of doing this very, very common chord. Okay, here we are for our first G chord variation. I call this a big G. And if you look, there was our kind of standard regular G chord there, just using the three fingers. All we've done here is move the third finger over onto the B string, the second string, and little finger has gone where that third finger used to be. So you can see now we're using all four fingers. If I just give it a strum, it's a really good sounding G chord. All we've done in fact really is change the open B string obviously the note B, into a D note, which is still keeping our G chord, just still named a regular G because we're only using the notes G, B and D. Now this chord is became particularly famous in kind of like a, a lot of the Guns N' Roses and, and Poison and that sort of thing, like, and Bon Jovi in the 80s, all that acoustic guitar kind of rock stuff. All of the acoustic guitar songs nearly always use this version of the G chord. And it does sound a little bit bigger than kind of more poppy or rocky than the original G. But there is one version which is a, considered an even rockier one, which we're going to go to now. So here is our big rock G. Now all I've done is the last one that I just told you I call big G, all I've done is lifted off my first finger and now it's suddenly a rock G. And the reason this sounds more rocky, and I've actually renamed it as being a G5, is because it now only contains the notes G and D. We don't have any more the note B involved with this chord. If we looked at the notes one at a time, we've got a G here. The A string here is muted by the underneath of that second finger. So that, that finger is muting that string. Then we've got open D, open G, then another D, and another G. And this is a big rock chord. With distortion, this chord sounds huge. It's very, very cool indeed. Now there is another very, very common way of playing a G chord, which is a little bit more folky than anything else. You tend to use it when you're changing from a C chord to a G chord very quickly, which is quite common because the C and the G chords occur very regularly together. So if we just, there's your regular C chord. Now if we wanted to go to this new G, all you're doing is you're splitting your third and fourth fingers onto the two outside strings. Now this can be a little bit tricky, um, especially when you're starting out, but have a go at it because it does make changing C to G a lot quicker. Now, these two fingers I'm pointing out just to keep out of the way, but you would normally just leave them hanging around. I didn't want you to get confused and think they were down. So what we've got here is the third finger over on the thicker string, and it's a lot flatter than normal, and that's deliberately to make sure that that string there is muted. The same as what we had for that kind of rocking G, but this time we're getting rid of that a string there, it's muted by the third finger, open D string, open G, open B, and little finger down there playing the top note G as well. So this is a full G chord, but you can see if I'm just changing from C to G, there's C, there's our new G, C, G. And that used to be one of the hardest changes, all fingers off, now it's a lot easier. Now some people put actually that second finger and play kind of exactly the same dots as that initial G that we learnt, just without the first finger. That's okay, a lot of people like that, and that's fine to play it that way. I just think this, this note is a little bit redundant. If I play this one, and then without it, you hear very little difference, but it's a hell of a lot easier just to play it with that. Now the important thing with these new G chord variations is making sure that you use them in the right circumstance. Now, particularly the big G and the rock G work really, really well doing chord changes going from G to D. But I'm going to explain that a little bit better in the one minute changes. So just get your fingers around these chords and uh, I'll see you for another bit of a lesson very soon. Bye bye.